Chapter 2, Foundations of E-Marketing. Now this is the bit where we start looking at it from the perspective of going, what do we do differently with marketing and the internet than we do with marketing and one of the other sub-disciplines? Now the internet is real life, real life is thoroughly cross-wired with the internet, so the marketing theories that apply to a customer who exists in a shopping centre apply to a customer who is using the internet. So what we want to do with this chapter is, this is the refresher, the quick boot camp, a reminder of what marketing looks like. If you've done marketing for a whole bunch of different subjects before, great, you should be just looking through this going, yep, know that, I know that, I know that. This makes certain that we're on a common, a common platform, a common language, we're all speaking the same marketing. Across the course of the book, you'll see that the Chatter Institute of Marketing and the American Marketing Association definitions get a run. That's because this particular approach was to look at the AMA and say, this is for when we need to go deal with customers in close quarters, and the CIM for when we need to be doing the business to business thinking. So both of them have their own approaches and we use both. So get down and dirty with the uh, customer focus, you're looking at it as a set of verbs. It's activities, it's creation, communication, deliver, exchange. If you are going down the path of creating something on the internet, that's a good four pack to be thinking about. What am I going to make? How am I going to deliver it to my customer? What platform? What are they going to get in return for either looking at my content, using my content, or what am I going to get from them for providing this content? And how are we going to package this whole set of ideas up and distribute it around the place as a communication? With this, the way in which uh, the activities comes across in the book, we're also looking at from the point of view of we're getting you to do marketing. So you'll be using marketing research, you'll be applying the marketing mix, you'll be looking at customer relationship marketing, you'll be measuring outcomes, you'll be doing things. Marketing is an activity, marketing is a set of processes. Value becomes one of the critical elements that you need to be able to explain what it is, what you're doing with the internet, does for someone else. If you're running an Instagram account, for a marketing purpose, what does that photo you're putting up onto that account do for the audience you're trying to reach? So this is the notion of value. It's very much moving away from what is the feature, what is the component part, through to what does the customer get from interacting with what I've created. And it's a thing that you need to be mindful of all the way through, is that we will be planning content strategies, you'll be planning delivery strategies, where it'll be very easy to start thinking in terms of features of, well, I'll need 16 photos, and they'll need to all be of tabby cats, because I'm going to have a cat-based Instagram. Like, well, why that? What value does the cat Instagram community get from your particular approach? So rather than feature, stick to benefit. And this is the figure 1.4. We talk about the virtual product. There's a lot of stuff to unpack and work with here is the outcomes you're looking for. Are you going to use something? Are you going to feel something? Are you going to store something? Are you going to absorb something? Content, experience, service, virtual goods. Look at where the benefits lie. And this is the thing with the PDF files, that you're going to encounter as readings in this subject. It's a virtual good that you'll download to your hard drive. It's content that you read, then think about, and then if you use that content to actually succeed. So you read a PDF file, you've saved it to your hard drive, you've talked to friends about it, and then you've used it in writing your assignment, you can have picked up all the parts of the virtual product. Or you just stored it to your hard drive, forgotten about it, never used it, and gained none of the content and none of the experiences. 
All right, CIM definition, it's your business to business end, it's your industrial strength. Thornwire, I reckon you've got a bit, it's a really good one for the internet because it's identify, anticipate, satisfy profitably. Profitably is going to be a big thing we're going to push this semester is calculating the costs and calculating your return. So we're going to have pricing sections, we're going to have sections on revenue, we're going to have sections on how to turn a profit, and that profit can be points scored in an assessment task, dollars made, success in other means. But how are you going to turn a profit? Now, what this also says is that when we're talking identify, anticipate, satisfy, these are the elements of the book that are really going to come to the fore. Research is key. Market research is central to the two approaches. CB is key for the CIM. And product development. You've got to be able to make something. You've got to be able to identify what's the need, and then you've got to satisfy that need. So your product development, that offer, that value creation, that's critical. And return on investment. We're going to talk about financial profit and non-financial profit. We're going to deal with both of those. But basically, what you're thinking is, how do I get more back from this experience than I put into it? So we're looking at also bringing this philosophy across to the whole of the way the subject operates. What's the benefit that you get? And how do we make that benefit greater than the effort you've expended. What's also really important is that if you look at this, marketing is not a cost, marketing is an investment. Costs get cut, investments return money. So a quick skim over the core concepts that you need to pick up from the text. Top of the list, marketing concept. You need to be familiar with this because you're going to be using it. You're going to be living this. If you're doing theory track or you're doing practice track, either way, the marketing concept is going to be central here. The marketing concept can solve a bunch of problems for you, but you need to be mindful of it, thinking about it, and then applying it. The mix, as always, the marketing mix gets a run because it's one of the best shortcuts you can have for thinking through, what do I need to do? So at any given point, in the marketing of an internet activity, in the performance of an internet activity, in the maintenance of a social media site, you want to be thinking price, product, promotion, place. What does it cost someone to use this? Now, if it's an inch, you're putting a photo on Instagram, it costs them a couple of seconds. It's pretty cheap. Is it something of interest to them? It's a product that you're offering there. Is it the right place? If you're putting up text-based you know, excerpts from a textbook or excerpts from a chapter or you're writing a story in words, is Instagram the right place to put that story? Is it the right channel? Should you be doing 100 tweets in a row or should you be doing a single blog post? What is the right channel to reach the audience you want? And promotion is how are people going to know what you've got available at the right channel? So promotion can be as micro level detail as what's the hashtag I should put on this photo, hashtag selfie, to should I be buying sponsored linkage on Facebook so that people see my page and see my account or should I be participating in this trend how do I get my message to my audience? Those, if you're thinking those four things, you're thinking marketing mix, whenever you're operating your social media presence this semester, you're going to have a quick, what is it that I'm doing? What's it cost someone to access it? Is it the right place for them to get to it? How are they going to hear about it? All right, a couple of the other things. You're going to need to be conversant with innovation adoption theory. Simply because the internet is a long string of new. Basically, if you can cope with innovation adoption theory, you could help people cope 
with operating on the internet. So first thing is innovativeness. You need to understand what it is, what it does. You need to also be mindful of your own innovativeness level compared to that of your audience. Now, if you're into really new and quite new products and you're all about you know, trying the latest and greatest and newest thing, but your audience is all about classic and, uh, well, classic retro and products that haven't haven't been updated in a while, then an audience producer mismatch, you're not going to be able to give them the content they want. And it's okay for someone not to be innovative. They are every much as a market. So the innovative of here's the newest thing to the here's an old classic. Here's a thing you already know about. Both are fair markets. So thing to remember, 2.5% of the market is driven to own the newest, latest, shiniest, immediatist thing. The rest of the market isn't. And 66% of the market is not interested in new, it's not interested in latest, it's interested in what's everyone else done, what's acceptable and what's standard practice. So there's a big niche for you to go play with there. The key. The key theory for innovation for you is relative advantage. Now, innovation adoption theory, there are five consistent features. It's the Rogers 1995. It's well worth getting yourself very well versed in this because these five are the absolute keys to getting a new idea across. But the one that beats everything else out consistently is relative advantage. So what you're looking for is what do you do that's just that little bit better for your customer than one of your competitors or what they were doing before. Be very conscious of your relative advantage. What is it that's giving you your edge and how are you going to maintain it? So the other thing is rejection, laggards, very important part of this. When someone says no, that's it. That, 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 that is it. There, there is no negotiation. If someone rejects a new idea, fine. One of the things about the way this course is set up is that there are a couple of fallback positions. If you don't want to do, go out and use the internet. Sure, you can still do e-marketing. I'll respect that. No, you go across and do theory. If you don't want to do theory, I respect that. You go across and you do uh, practice. If you don't want to do theory or practice, then I'm going to recommend a wide range of other subjects that aren't this one. But I'm not going to tell you that you should, or I'm not going to force you into doing something here, because a rejection is final. All right, quick thing that you, a uh, theory point that, uh, this is actually borrowed from social marketing, that you want to be looking at is stages of change. In the onset, you want to be looking at this from your own position. Where are you at? Pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, where are you on the stages? Then you also want to be thinking about this from your strategic perspective of, if you're going to get an audience, that audience is currently somewhere else. How do we get that audience to us? So most of the time, the biggest challenge you're going to face is that it's pre-contemplation. No one's heard of you, no one's heard of your product, no one's heard of your Instagram, your Twitter, or your blog. So they don't know you exist. How are you going to let them know that you exist and you're part of it and you should be there? So all these are factors. The five stages are things that you need to be considering across the course of this semester. Stage six, the uh, thank you, job done. We'll come to that in week 13. But what you're looking at here as well is that the stages of change will describe your own behaviour towards the social media presences I'm asking you to undertake as part of your assessment tasks and your ongoing activity in the course. So that's your summary overview. The chapter's got some more depth and detail. Why I'm giving you shortened versions of the PowerPoint decks and the video is that I want you to focus on some critical areas then go back and look at the rest. But your highlight package here is you definitely want to be conversant with stages of change, conversant with innovation adoption, 
and thinking through every time you make a decision, get yourself into that routine of, well, why this for this audience? What does it do for them? What does it cost them? How are they going to hear about it? If you've got that in mind, and not always necessarily that consciously spoken out, but if you've got that in mind, it's going to make life a lot easier to run your social media accounts.